Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. I'm Elder Jim Wormley, kind of pinch hitting this morning, providing a different voice for this, the Lord's Day. Pastor Cindy is on what she self describes as a sermon Sabbath for the next two Sundays. On November 15th, we'll hear the voice of the Reverend Dr. Barbara Bundick. We have a couple of birthdays in the next week, Emily Stack and Laura Totten Schwartz. Also, Julie and Ken Farber are celebrating their anniversary this coming week. I would note that you should pray for Ron Parrish, who has been in the hospital this past week. Let us worship God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be more perfectly love you and glorify you and you only. Through Christ our Lord, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all sinful ways. Trusting in God, let us confess our sins. O Lord, our God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We live for ourselves apart from you. Help us admit our sin, forgive us of our selfishness. Lead us to choose your will and to obey your commandments so that we may know joy and peace of, the, of your presence through the Holy Spirit to the glory of your name. Amen. God refuses to give up on us. God restores us. God sent his only son to save us. There is nothing that he can separate us from the love of God. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Is perfect. Your commandments are clear. Send your spirit so that we have ears to hear what you are saying to us and to your church. Amen. Today's scripture reading is John 15, 4, 9 through 12, Common English Bible. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you, and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
It is an honor for me to speak this morning. It's also a challenge which leads to my growth by preparing and delivering a message. I hope you experience spiritual growth as well. Please pray with me. Our Lord and our God, may my words be heard, words that your Spirit is saying to us as part of your church. And may those words transform us to more fully live in your kingdom and to experience joy. Amen. Recall the opening words this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. That is God acting. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That is our response. We respond, we respond with rejoice. Joy is just a three-letter word, but a word that has emotional energy and is positive and peaceful. A joy moment makes life and the whole world around us seem to sparkle. The Bible, by the count of various sources, mentions joy, and that includes enjoy and rejoice, more than 600 times. If you strip out all the conjunctions and prepositions, Lord is the most commonly used word. Lo, then we have a trio of oft-mentioned words, important to our faith, repeated over and over. Yes, those words are love, peace, and joy. As an occasional preacher, I've granted myself the luxury of choosing a topic, that is, I'm not tethered to a particular scripture of the day. But for today, I've chosen John 15 verses that Lydia Johansson read, summarizing and underscoring my core message. Jesus was in his final days in human form on this earth. In fact, when these words were spoken, Jesus was probably within hours of Gethsemane, betrayal, and arrest. He knew what was ahead. He was speaking very bluntly to his disciples, and they were actually beginning to get it. Note that Jesus spoke of his joy. In the same circumstances, with dark clouds gathering overhead, would we be experiencing and speaking of joy? Let's dig into this and see what we can learn about joy and how to make it part of our day, of our lives, and of our witness. You might wonder, how did the Holy Spirit get me interested in the subject of joy? Well, after an early Wednesday morning Bible study several months ago, the Reverend John Hudson and I got to talking about what is the difference between joy and happy? Happy in its derivatives, by the way, is mentioned less than 100 times in the Bible. So for starters, joy outnumbers happy by better than six to one. Not a week later after that conversation, Horizons, which is the magazine for Presbyterian women, arrived in our mailbox. Lo, there was an article about the difference between joy and happy. I mentioned that joy is an emotion, something that comes from within. Whereas happy is a feeling, a response to an experience. We can create experiences that lead to happy. For instance, we celebrate a birthday complete with cake and ice cream. In late December, we wish others a happy new year. Why not a joyous new year? Happy often is about self. Joy is not quite as simple. We are seized by the emotion of joy. It can be very unexpected and it can transform us for a moment or up to a lifetime. Simply put, joy is a gift. It moves us to a different state of being. Like God's grace, it's always available to us. We just need to look for it, and like grace, we need to enjoy it. Here are some examples of joy that I have personally witnessed. First, think of the newborn baby, a few days old so the eyes can now focus, fresh from a feeding, and then that smile. Those new eyes connect with your eyes, the sparkle, the emotion. That's joy. I'm sure we've all experienced this. It can make adult eyes tear. Another example, my brother-in-law Russ is pictured here in a restaurant in Prague in the Czech Republic. Russ is of Czech origin. 
he ordered shiskova, which is a Czech dish with dumplings, because he remembered being served this at his grandmother's table. For me, one of the highlights of our trip was his response to the first few bites. Quote, this tastes just like grandma's, end quote. His eyes just sparkled, but both of us experienced joy. Another example, a year and a half ago, my brother was dying of pancreatic cancer. I was with him when the oncologist displayed the x-rays of his liver. The conclusion was obvious. Bud elected to enter hospice care. Later, twice actually, I witnessed my brother responding to visitors who were struggling to find words of comfort. My brother said to his visitors, quote, I'm going to a better place, end quote. Both times he made that statement of faith, my eyes teared. That was joy, even in the midst of sorrow. This is Jesus in our lesson, speaking and living joy as he headed to the cross. As the psalmist wrote, you changed my mourning into dancing. You took off my funeral clothes and dressed me up in joy so that my whole being might sing praises to you and never stop. Isn't that the emotion that we all want to experience? Or consider the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi from his jail cell. I'm glad and I'll continue to be glad even though I am in prison for Christ. So let's expand our inquiry to all of creation, which can help us experience the emotion of joy also. Last March, COVID-19 closed most of our public spaces, including the museums in Chicago. But did you see the video of the penguins from the Shedd Aquarium walking the corridors of the Field Museum and checking out Sue? Since there was no human traffic, why not? Oh, the places will go. It was precious. It was joy, an expression and emotion originating from creation. COVID-19 actually made this possible for a pair of penguins who were named Izzy and Darwin. Last March, April, a cardinal pair took up their places right outside of our window at breakfast time. Cheryl named them Ode to Joy as they sang away. Beethoven must have felt the same emotion as he wrote the tune by that name. Again, joy coming from creation. Somehow those cardinals knew we were hungry for singing. Finally, the Holy Spirit set me up for all of this using our youngest grandchild, Mary Elizabeth, who, at the age of four and a half, directed a very loving observation to me. I quote, You don't share your smile much, do you, Grandpa? I took this as a very loving compliment, and yes, it generated a smile. My joy synapses fired. All from the lips of a granddaughter, so full of grace. But it was also a call to me to find my joy around the clock. Hopefully these stories illustrate some of the characteristics of joy. One is that joy is lasting. Another is joy satisfies. Joy is characteristic of God's people and joy is found in God's presence. So what leads us to joy? A bit about the science. In 1862, which was nearly 160 years ago, a French anatomist documented that a contraction of a muscle in each eye results in that genuine, spontaneous smile, the tearing or the sparkle. Importantly, he documented that we have no control of this muscle. We can form our lips into the shape of a smile, but we cannot make our eyes sparkle as in genuine joy. Now you might ask, can a congregation experience joy? Yes. Consider Psalm 126, just the first three verses. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. 
Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was said at that time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, and the Lord has done great things for us, and we should be overjoyed. Note that the Israelites experienced joy by recognizing it was the Lord's action, not their own. In this COVID-19 and post-election time, our communities could use a shot of emotion leading to joy. Remember the words from John 15 again, verse 11. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I understand, by the way, that in the Greek, the words joy and gift are related. For John, joy is a gift that flows out of our union with God. And like grace, there is unlimited potential for joy. God is giving to us. Remember, all that we are and all that we have is from God. We cannot make joy happen by ourselves. In the next verse, John has a strong prescription. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. God generously shares dominion with us humans. Hopefully we also share that with others. As Christians, we experience joy as a spiritual presence, living in relationship with God and with one another. This simply put, put is faith. Listen for the words of Henry Nouwen, a Dutch priest and prolific author. Quote, joy does not simply happen. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is an attitude based on the knowledge that we belong to God and that nothing, not even death, can take that away from us. Again from the psalmist, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let's go to the Lord's house. We need to go into the Lord's house, that is, into our very being and plan to reside there. So there is a prescription for joy. It results from faith, which simply put is to trust God and noting what God has done for us. This familiar bumper sticker contains a somewhat alliterative phrase, joy in Jesus. But there's actually some fine print. It starts with, find your joy in Jesus. This is the act of faith on our part. We should expect joy. We should be on the lookout for joy. We should name it or when we experience it, and we should embrace it. Back to John 15, the words from the common English Bible, which we're smoking this morning, uses the word remain. Earlier translations use the word abide. In everyday usage, the meaning intended here is not in common usage, so it is not easy for us to understand. My interpretation of to abide or to remain is we're to wait patiently. We are to remain in place. We need to be sure or firm in our faith. We need to endure in spite of doubts or hardships. We need to acknowledge the presence of God. COVID-19 restrictions may keep us from moving around, but we can decide to move out of our mental caves. Like our call to worship, we are offered a fresh start every day. We need to start with God. My personal prescription is to find joy by employing some of the means of God's grace. I'm going to highlight three, prayer, study, and worship. For prayer, a good place to start is Romans 8, 26. In Eugene Peterson's interpretation, God's Spirit is right alongside. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. Study. Find joy in truth. One of my favorite phrases in the Bible is Pilate's question, what is truth? Our authority, 
Our source of truth is the Bible, always a good place to start. St. Ephan of Edessa, a 5th century Christian in Syria, described his experience like this. I read the opening of the book and was filled with joy, for its verses and lines spread out their arms to welcome me. The first sentence rushed out and kissed me and led me to the next. Well, we don't necessarily need to start at verse 1, and we should not necessarily expect a kiss. But there are lots of helps available right in this congregation to guide our study. A Bible collecting dust on the bookcase simply shorts us on truth. And then there is worship. Well, here we are, connected with our brothers and sisters around the globe with the assistance of 2020 technology. Because of COVID-19, our opportunities to worship have actually multiplied. We can experience worship and joy 24-7 in any place that we might find ourselves. So I would add some numbers to that bumper sticker. Find your joy in Jesus 24-7. God provides. It's up to us to recognize the bounty and give thanks in joyful praise. In faith, trusting God, we'll discover that the creation is just full of joy. I close with my paraphrase of our opening words of the psalmist. Our Lord created this day. We need to look for joy, then we need to celebrate it. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we trust your spirit. We find joy in your truth, even though we are sometimes unsure what it means for us. We miss singing. We miss gathering in small groups, that which is familiar. But you have shown us new ways to worship, to minister to each other, to encourage one another in our common faith. We rejoice in the truth that you're always doing a new thing. Make your presence known to us, encourage us, and sustain us in our faith. Amen. For our blessing this morning, I'm taking an excerpt from Isaiah 55, which is found in our hymn book called, We Will Go Out With Joy. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a song of joy, Alleluia. We will go out with joy. I say now, live surrounded by God's love and peace and expect joy. Joy in me.